Charles, you're welcome to Journalist Corner on Sportivation Media TV. This show is dedicated to sports journalists who have contributed to the development of sports in Nigeria. And to start with us on the show today, we have a legendary sports journalist who has seen it all in Nigeria, who has, who has been so successful that many people look up to him in the industry. And we have none other than the legendary sports journalist Godwin Henakena who will be taking us through the sports he participated in while growing up and what he's currently doing he has to talk about he's going to talk about the Super Eagles Manchester United and everything you should know about him don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms at Sportivation Media also on YouTube you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Sportivation Media come with us Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And um, your little introduction, sir. My name is Godwin Henakara. First and foremost, I'm a podcast journalist and a businessman. Um, but hey, some persons seem to know me for sport or with sport administration these days. I'm forgetting that uh, journalism is what puts food on my table. So, journalist first and foremost, businessman, sports administrator. Interesting. Uh, um, we know that you are a, a, an accomplished sports journalist and um, we've followed you for a long time. But we need to know your, your sporting background. When you were growing up, what sports did you participate in? Well, if you grew up in the village, um, the only sport you participate in would be football. Mm. So I grew up in uh, one of the best villages in the world. <laughs> uh, I can't go there precisely. That is uh, it's a East local government in the African state. Uh, I'm from I do not, an after mine for that matter. Um, I played football, I was very good. You know, I played football was life. Mm. Football was everything until my father called it short. You know, I stopped football. That brought tears out of my eyes and out of my mom. Mm. Uh, like I said, it was everything to me. One day my father cursed my enemy, not me, said, um, if I don't leave football, now I will never make it in life. So, like I say, the rest is history. Um, I stopped playing football, you know, after that encounter. Um, but I didn't know that I was going to be a sports journalist. But yeah, I have to be. Hmm. Interesting and so emotional right there. But um, from there, for some people, they will have probably said, okay, because my father stopped me from playing football and sport journalism, you still have a way in football. So, so was, does that contributed to your reason to become a sport journalist? No, certainly not. It had nothing to do with me becoming a sport journalist. Um, I, I also tell you that I didn't know I was going to be a sport journalist. The interesting part of it is I remember one of my big, big uncles in those days, um, Honorable Joseph Oya Kesha. He saw me one day, you know, I came home, I become a journalist. So I got to one day, we were talking, he said, he knew I was going to be a journalist. Uh, I think the, what I didn't do that day was to ask him, sir, how did you know? You know, but sometimes I sit down and I'm like, okay, while in school, I used to read a lot. You know, I used to steal my mom's money to buy uh, newspapers. In those days in the village, you know, I used, then I, I, I used to subscribe, even in secondary school, uh, I was subscribing to Complete Football Magazine, you know, uh, through my mom. She would give me, she doesn't care, I was still was into big provision, you know, kind of business. So money was on, I would sell something like that. So that interest, when I stopped playing for I started reading, I, I, I read a lot, you know. I kept reading everything I see. As long as there's sports in it, I will read. And that was it. Um, when I left school, that part died. I went to Kano immediately the week I left school. St. Peter's Grammar School in England. That was 1986. I left for Kano. Uh, I got to Kano and um, I love the line. I just realized that that wasn't where I was supposed to be because it was just a strange land. Everyone was, you see that you were a mechanic, a panel beater, uh, what do you call these people now? Iron bender, those kind of, you know, I'm like, ah. um, at the stage, they almost forced me to learn where they be at, something like that. I was like, oh, no. It was frustrating. So somehow, I ran from Kano, came back to Agenibure. 
uh, I met, got to, that same with my in-law, late in-law, Pajiyas in Akeda. You know, God bless his soul, took a lot of us out of the village, you know, to the cities. Um, and I said, Daddy, I want to follow him to be this. He said, why not? You know, that's how I followed him to be in. The rest, like they say, this is true. Interesting. Uh, um, according to what we read about you, you started as a print journalist, and now you are a broadcast journalist. How was the transition from print to broadcast? Okay. Um, where I am now, where you are interviewing me, used to be the home of uh, today's sports newspapers. Mm -hmm. This was where Paul Bassi was publishing today's sports. You know. Um, sometime in 1996, I think, or 95, I can't remember now. Or even, yeah, my part and that of Obasi crossed. You know, I was still in, in, uh, in an estate with him, Aurelia Gigi. He was still outside of the estate, just like three minutes' walk. You know, one day he came visiting somebody in my compound. And the woman now called me. She's late now, Mrs. Abegu. She called and said, ah, come and see, because she knows me as sports, that mm -hmm. sports is my life. So come and meet. So, 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 so. so I came and saw him. I was like, wow. Me meeting Povasi. You know, so from that moment, I was always wherever he was. I would go to his house, we would play Scrabble. Uh, as usual, we had a lot of young people around him, and I'm one of the many. Um, I became like his two I see. You know, you see that with him, wherever he goes, or I was kind of a cold bodyguard mm -hmm. to his late wife, Madame Comfort. You know, when a guy, as we used to call him, he was always traveling, you know, as a media officer to CAF and FIFA, he was always out of Nigeria. So I was always there, Madame, you know, like that, since we are, you know. So one day, this blessed day, he was writing an article, I think it was the Punch newspapers. And he needed information. He asked, he said, in 1988, did um, uh, Augustine play for the Super Eagles? I said, yes, he played for the Super Eagles. Not only did he play, he left a landmark. Egbabon was playing as a defensive midfielder. And that game against Morocco ended because he went to penalties. Egbabon scored the sudden death penalty in that game. There was another young man, Victor Okozo. Victor Okozo was writing a book, and the forward was written then uh, by the then General Secretary of FIFA, Seb Latter. So, I mean, supposedly was an authority. He said, no, that everyone did not go to the nation's cup. You know, not these days that you can take a look at your phone. Then there was no internet, there was nothing. So, I mean, you have to rely on the magazine to know whether you played or not. So I said, you know, I said, so Professor said, to me later, that something told him that I was right. So he followed my, mm -hmm. you know, and wrote his article. He later went to check. Because the only reason he asked was I didn't have enough time to go check. So he later went to check and I was right. He said he wanted to start a community paper with Tin Aurelia Gege. That was a dream, a community paper. Later, community paper became a national paper to this spot. And that's how I started my print business. But I must tell you, before then, I started writing. In 1987, my first article was published by uh, Complete Football Magazine. And the cover of that magazine was Etim Essing, A Rebel with a Cause. So my article was in that magazine. So from there, I joined Complete Football Magazine Boys Club. You know, so I was, I became like uh, an auxiliary reporter. You know, for complete football magazine then. And then Obasi came, you know, joined today's sport, Paulian staff of today's sport. You know, while I was doing that, enjoying it without internet, without TV, there was nothing, there was no super sports, nothing, nothing. Ah, how, how we, we were writing there was, I sometimes <laughs> I look back and say, wow. Um, then it was on Master Sport on NTA. Just told me one day, he said, God be. They are following me to NTA tomorrow. I was, you know, next tomorrow. He told me on the Thursday. Master's call was on a Saturday. He told me in the morning. So I was like, I thought he was joking. He said, he's serious. His professor will laugh. Even in a serious part, he will laugh and laugh. So I'm like, is he serious? So all of his staff, she and they said, oh, guy is serious. So 
that they just had a discussion with Tanko. You know, Tanko was the producer, producer of Master Sports then. And this and that said, okay, fine. What do we do? Let's do something. Gentlemen, I didn't have a trouser. I didn't have a proper shirt. I only had a trouser that had become a shirt maker because it was tough. So I was I needed a suit. I needed shoes. I needed a shirt. I needed a tie. That's what you need to appear on Master Sport. I didn't have any of this. I didn't have a shoe. I didn't have a shirt. I didn't have a tie. I've never worn a suit before. You know, but fortunately I had a friend Sunday, uh, Kesta, who is more like a call him a brother, not a friend. His brother was in the police with share in Portacol. So he had an extra black clothing that he left with him. So he said, I got it. You know, if he's not going use this one now. So I took that cloth to a tailor in school, Larry. One of my brothers, John Alouwe, took me. I remember people saying that you can't make, you know, uh, a, a suit in two weeks. Mm -hmm. They need a month to make a suit. I went to school, Larry. I met a guy. I remember that tailor from our area. And I told him, I'm going for a wedding on Saturday. And I need this suit. By Friday morning, Friday afternoon, the suit was ready. Went to pick it. And I went to Master Sport. That was how the journey of Master Sport and TV started for me. Um, TV blew me. You know, you know what TV can do? A lot of persons started, you know, ah, I'm starting to When I came back that first time, my in law, my late in law, Mr. Andrew Abohade, asked me, because I was still with my in law. He was married to my elder sister, we dated her sister. So where where did you go to? I said, I went to a wedding. I didn't tell anybody. Mm. So they started hearing from outside that I am on TV. Mm. But the story of me not telling anybody, um, it's about, for me, it was about trying to prove people wrong. Mm. Because at that point, they said I wasn't serious. That was I went to visit somebody, a family friend who was a tailor. Somewhere in the lazy, I used to go there to while every time. I went there that day, and the guy said I should leave his shop. Mm. You know, that I wasn't ready. That if I were serious, I won't be where I am now. I, I cried for really sick because I'm a very emotional person. I cried for really sick till I got home. I didn't know how I got home. You know, but Master Sport paid, today's Sport paid, <laughs> and it's still changed. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And from there, you are know, also a football administrator. You remember very well when NFL gave promotion to the NPFL, their first season, second season. You led them to the Champions League, CAF Champions League. That was a story for a club that just gave promotion to the Premier League. Their second season, they played in the CAF Champions League. Now, that's to mean that from being a footballer, although you were not allowed to fulfill that your dream, you moved into journalism and now as a football administrator. So, has it been? As a sport journalist, because we always said, I've heard you say most times that when most sport journalists enter into the inside, it's not the same sport journalist. How have you been able to cope with that? You see, uh, as a sport administrator, I'm not a football administrator. As a as a sport administrator, because I must say this, um, in 2006, the general overseer of uh, Mountain of Fire Miracles Ministries, Dr. Kola Ole Lukoya, Daniel Olukoya, thank you all do that, um, called me and said they wanted me to be a consultant on sports to MFM as a member of the ministry. You know, later director of sports in the ministry. Uh, and between 2006 and uh, 2011, I refused to get MFM into the league. Mm. Because I said, we can't stand, stand the shenanigans going on. So many things going on. But at some point I realized that you can't just critique from a distance. You have to be on the inside to see if you will have persons who share your ideas to effect change. So by 2011, uh, we got into the league. I actually bought a spot in the Nationwide League. We bought Aqua Stars from Lagos. And that's how I took MFM into the league, you know, nationwide, the NNL, we, bought, we didn't buy a slot this time, someone gave up his slot, Bolo Wotong, 
God bless him, is the DG of uh, the Sport Commission in Lagos now, uh, Tui Dafa. You know, gave up his spot uh, for MFM. And that was when the real jungle started. <laughs> we understand that uh, football is real business. Um, first season, you know, there's something about me. Um, I was groomed by a man who taught us something. He said, never say fail. He said, give all you had, or all you've got. He will tell you, give all that you've got. If you try the first time when you fail, try again. You know, um, there's, I was, I, my wife will tell people that there's nothing the husband cannot do unless he doesn't want to do it. What she means is that I give everything. You know, you can't win all the time. It's not possible. Not you know, I give everything. And when I give everything and I fail, I will come back again. And you just remember, um, I just remember why I growing up. My dad was a very fierce man. I don't want to use the word strict. Fierce, you know, you know education. I used to go and fight in people's houses. You know, they were at the point they now say, okay, let him just beat you so that he can go. That was the kind of person I was. And I always tell people that I wanted to join the Mumbai Police Force in the Why I wanted to fight. That was the reason I wanted to join the Mumbai Police Force. I just like, you know, at that point. So then I look back and I say, you are crazy. You know, those things are gone. Thank God for God and Christianity. You know, I sit where? I, I missed the first time. And I said, the second time, MFM will play in the Nigerian professional football. I want to be part of that dream of MFM, the first church in the history of Nigerian football, playing the Premier League. But before then, I had taken MFM to Goa, India, to play in the inaugural Church World Cup. And I won it. I came back with a trophy. No, it only was it was serious business. And we came, and I, people were mocking, always look at a journalist, you know, I'm just, I was like, what is my strength? What has always been my strength? I asked those who have been there before. I keep them as friends. That's what I do. That's my secret. Hard work can take you this far. It can't take you all the way. You need someone to hold you by the hand to say, hey, it is quicker for someone to hold you by the hand than for you running. That's why in athletics you find pace setters and what have you when you have some challenges. So I took advantage of the lessons I learned the first season that we missed promotion. And the second season we went to Premier League. What was another advantage? I put together a collection of points. Onoa, Stephen Ode, um, Sikro Latu Bosu. I had Brosa. I had, there were so many, Austin Opera in my defense, the captain of the team. I had that to a room in hand. I had um, Abayomi for Larry, my goalkeeper. Nasamu, they were all there. And I had a coach, the longest serving coach with the team, in Fidel is a young man whose passion knows no bounds. No wonder he has taken Plato United to the Apex right now. Is for 13 good years we were working together. You know, he would just say, boss, 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 boss. He knows there's nothing he wanted that I'm not giving my best to make sure he gets. He never got everything because I'm human, but most of those things I will make it happen. So my strength was giving everything that I have, pray very, very hard under the anointing of the Todikul Putting boys together, Keeping the promises I make to them. I never promise what I cannot do or what I cannot give to them. When I say I'm going to give you one error, they get that one error. But key is that I never let them listen. Sport administration was, is, and will always be a part time job for me. My first love, my job, the job that puts money on the table that feeds my family is sport journalism. Not administ being an administrator. I have never. I mean, a lot of people used to they say, ah, "How can a chairman of a, a club side be talking on radio and TV?" Uh, and I said to them, "Sport administration is, by the way, mm. you can be fired anytime. Mm. But this is the job, you know." And I told the Joe then I said, "Look at that. I don't need any salary or allowance. I've I've been director of sport in MFL. This is the fourteenth year." 
I've never earned a salary allowance. I've said it on TV and radio. I don't. This is what gives me money. This, the window, the doors that spots journalism has opened. That's what some of my colleagues don't understand. That if you do a job, the day you do a job that you are afraid of, sack. Or you are, where you are, the position you are occupying, you are scared that you might lose it. You are not a serious human being. I've said nobody can sack me. You know? Because my hands are full and it's just very good. So that's my strength. I'm, I'm, I'm unsackable. <laughs>